Hi everyone, welcome back to Quadrant Boots. Today we are going to discuss uh, a topic about how to enable password authentication in Nginx. So we have discussed uh, several other topics related to Nginx. So this will be a continuation topic topic on Nginx that explains uh, the configurations to enable password authentication. So when we deal with production grade web websites or web APIs, so uh, we'll have to configure multiple security mechanisms to uh, protect the API. So one of the mechanisms, such mechanism is basically password authentication. So there are different ways to achieve password authentication. So <clears throat> one is uh, we can say basic authentication and second is uh, authentication by uh, in integrating with third party systems. So basic authentication is the simplest form of uh, maybe say to enable authentication in any system. So here in this case, we will not be integrating uh, this Nginx with any third party systems. Uh, so the authentication will be established or achieved by configuring or managing the passwords locally. So compared to the third party system mechanism, this is less secure, but this is very simple. So uh, this less secure means as the passwords are managed locally. Uh, so basically, like I mean, it is not a very complicated system and uh, there is not that much protection on the way or the security in the way we store the password that's why i'm saying this is less secure compared to the other secure other other uh, password authentication mechanisms so here in this topic we are going to discuss about the basic authentication as this is the first step step or or the maybe we can say uh, the initial steps towards step towards enabling password authentication in nginx okay so the i'll quickly go through other the third party mechanism approach as well so we can integrate nginx with third party uh, uh, service providers like active directory ldap uh, other sso systems like we can enable google authentication uh, microsoft authentication so any other uh, so systems like i mean ping okta all those kind of oath based authentication systems that also we can integrate so for integrating with other uh, third party providers we will need to uh, maybe like i mean some we need to add some plugins on top of nginx okay so here we are going to explain the simple step which doesn't need a plugin we can just use or enable it by by using the simple uh, like or we can say the default nginx itself <clears throat> okay so in the basic authentication what we do is we create a password file uh, which will have uh, the username and the encrypted password so nginx will refer to this password file and verify whether the user and the username and the password is matching or not the password is not stored in plain text so it is basically stored as a hash uh, hash the hashing mechanism is basically something that we use the md5 based hashing and uh, similar configurations are there in apache web server as well so we use the similar technique to create a hash uh, the hash of the password and internally nginx will compare the password uh, password hashes and verify whether the username and password uh, the combination is matching or not okay so let's get into the system and see how we can enable this so i have uh, an nginx which is already configured so which has uh, which has basically uh, a web endpoint configured so here you see i have something called app.coderinboots.com and i am proxying it to a local api so uh, which is basically a python api which is running in my say, say, the say, same system itself so i have two location blocks one is slash subpath and second is slash okay so it is pointing to the local uh, locally deployed api so what i'm going to do is so uh, one more thing we can enable password authentication at the server level server level means basically for that is common to all locations i can keep the password configuration here so that all locations or all configurations below that uh, obeys that okay otherwise i can even keep it within a location block so that the password will be applicable only to a sub block okay so this is possible at here or at any location block specific okay so the fundamental part is first part is to basically create a password file okay so password file is nothing it is a simple text file where we store the password okay so where we store the username and the password so if you see any directory system or any directory system means systems like active directory or ldap how it have so in a simple terms what it is doing is it is storing the username and password within that system in a secure way okay so they also have user groups okay so all those kind of groupings and other complicated or complex 
uh, arrangements within that but in simple terms it we can say it's sim similar to our phone book or phone contact book where we have the user details which includes a password as well and we can use that system to rely on whether the user is genuine or not so here what we are doing is instead of relying on a third party system we are just relying on this file okay in this file what we have is we will store our username and a configured password so this password combination can be achieved in two ways so one is using open ssl so open ssl is like a library which can be used to, to generate ssl certificates uh, encryption decryptions those kind of uh, activities okay so here i mean we can use it for generating the md5 hash for the password that we are entering and another option is we can use something called ht password okay there is a command line utility ht password which is available from apache so uh, apache uh, httpd is a popular web server so as part of apache web server they have a utility they have a cli utility that helps to generate this password okay so uh, we can use either of these options first of first I'll, what i'll do is i'll create a password so the password file is going to be located in slash etc nginx dot ht password so why i am using dot is basically to cre create a hidden file so that it won't be visible directly okay and this will this command will create a user okay so create an entry in the ht password file and the second command will create uh, an entry for the password corresponding to this user in the ht password file so let us try that okay so i am creating a user coder in this ht password first executed so now let's see what is there in this ht password cat okay so now you can see there is a entry just coder colon nothing else is there okay so now what i am going to do is i am going to create an entry for the password okay open ssl so here it is nothing it is just a simple entry coder colon that's it second is to that one we are appending this greater than greater than is basically appending to that file second is appending an entry basically that is an output of open ssl password okay so let's see what is what is there in open ssl password so before executing this command let's see open ssl password hyphen hyphen help so it has so many options okay if you see the cryptographic options you see salt is there hyphen six is there is there apr1 we are using apr1 what is this md5 based password algorithm apache variant okay nginx also uses because see whatever password we create nginx need to understand how to decrypt it okay so if you create a password which is not known if you are encrypting or uh, hashing uh, a password uh, creating a password which is not known to or uh, the, if the nginx doesn't know how to decrypt it is of no use right that's why we are using apr1 based which is like apache variant and nginx also follows the apache based apache type encryption algorithm so nginx knows how to decrypt the password created in or password encrypted in this format okay so there are other options so what we are going to do is we are going to execute the second command okay sudo hyphen uh, basically sh hyphen c okay executing this particular command hyphen c for command an open ssl password apr1 okay and it is going to store the value in ht password file so let us create a password for our user coder okay i need to enter the password again enter the password okay so now it is saved okay now let's see what is there in the ht password now you see there is coder colon and this is what the password is okay so it created i didn't enter this kind of complex thing i entered a simple plain text password and it converted it create basically it is saving the hash of md5 hash of the password that that i that i populated so this is not encryption this is hashing okay and there is a difference between encryption and hashing encryption means it is reversible there is a process called decryption okay so whatever you encrypt if you know the key you can decrypt it hash means it is an irreversible operation so it's like i mean uh, it's like you are creating a hash of it and then the the way the password comparison happens is through other crypto uh, basically hashing function so using that hash it compares the hash and identifies whether the passwords are matching or not so this is more secure compared to encryption when when coming to say securing passwords <coughs> okay so this is a reversible 
So similarly, let's say I wanted to create another user. Okay, so I want I have two users, not just coder. I have another user, coder01. Okay, so coder01 also I am going to create the password for coder01. I am saving the password. Okay, so I stored, I basically configured the password for the second user also. Now you see, there is two entries. One is coder and second is coder01. And one more thing. So when I explained about the encryption, difference between encryption and hashing. So I used the same password. As in this example, I used the same password for both coder and coder01. But if you see the hashed value, both are completely different. It's not matching. Okay, but in case of encryption, what will happen? If you are encrypting the same text, Okay, so multiple times what will happen? So every time when you encrypt, the value will be the same. The encrypted value will be the same. But in case of hashing, what will happen? The encrypt, the hash, the value is not going to be the same. So here I configure the same password. Okay, here also I configure the same password. But if you see the hash to value, it is completely different. So that people will not be able to compare uh, whether, I mean, whether the password values are the same or not. Because the hash value is not going to be the same every time. Even if you hash the same value uh, at different times, the values will be different. Okay, so I hope I mean that is clear for you. So then uh, now what we need to do is we need to add the authentication uh, configuration in the Nginx to enable or tell Nginx that use this file to authenticate. Okay, so the second method is basically using uh, the Apache utils that we will explain later. So for now what we will do is we will create add this block. So here what we are doing is we are saying auth basic restricted content. This is basically the note and then auth basic user file. It refers to this file for the user authentication details, the password, everything. Okay. So what we'll do, we'll go to the Nginx configuration and I'm going to add this right now to the sub path. Okay. So we can configure this at any level. So at present I have configured it to the sub path. Okay, so now and one more thing, whatever file you create, it needs it should be readable by the Nginx user. Let's validate this Nginx hyphen T. Okay, Nginx test is successful. Configuration syntax is okay. Now let's restart service Nginx reload or restart. Okay, restart means it will restart everything. Reload means it will just reload the configuration. So it reloaded or restarted. Now let's open the browser okay app.codernboards.com so this is basically i have added to the sub path right so in the root there is no password authentication it just returned thank, thank you from root but let's try to read the sub path okay now you see there is a pop-up box it's asking me for the username and the password so i'm entering the correct password now you see Thank you from subpath. Okay, so it is asking for the user. Let's let's try with the wrong password. Okay, I am opening an incognito browser coder and I am entering a wrong password. You see, it's again giving the pop-up again. Okay, so it's showing the password is wrong. Now let's look at the log. Okay, tail hyphen of slash var log nginx error dot log. So last entry was see coder password mismatch. So that was the last entry. Okay. So it shows the password mismatch and it denied my request. Okay. So in the previous video, we have discussed about blocking request or allowing or blocking request based on IP address or range of IP address. So in this video, we discussed about securing the API endpoints using password. So the same password, let's say, uh, now let's go back to the configuration. So we can configure this auth section at the server level so that this will be applicable to both the endpoints okay right now it is only enabled to the sub path right i am enabling it at the server level okay so that this will be applicable to slash sub path and slash and anything that comes under this i'm going to comment this let's before restarting Let's verify this in the next hyphen T syntax is okay. Okay, 
restarted now now let's open the base path of it see now base path is also asking for password now this time i'll enter the second username okay so now thank you from root so that means now the authentication is enabled for all the endpoints under app.codernboards.com so i hope this example is clear so uh, maybe in one of the upcoming videos i will come with integrating nginx with some other third party systems like either google authenticator or active directory or something so that uh, you will be able to integrate in an uh, enterprise okay so in enterprise applications you will need some of this integration but this example helps you to enable basic authentication i hope this example is clear uh, thank you thank you very much for watching this video if you have any questions or queries feel free to comment below this video i'll definitely respond back